Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to draw hair in colored pencil. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. You guys have been requesting this for so long, so I am finally, finally doing it. Hair and colored pencil. I'm using luminance and polychromos for this piece. And while this video is just focusing on the hair, next week I will finish the rest of the portrait. So you have Jon Snow to look forward to. If you are supporters over on Patreon, the two hour version of this tutorial is available for you now, complete with voiceover. So make sure to head over and check that out. Now let's check out this tutorial. Parts of this video are going to be super sped up so that I could slow down some of the other parts that are more important. So this background, I added several layers of colored pencil with my polychromos, blended that out with Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner, let it dry, added several more layers, blended that with the Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner, went over it with my Derwent drawing Chinese white, blended that out with the odorless paint thinner and you see now I have that very soft background. Now one of the things that I want you to do is stop and really look at the shapes in the hair. This is so important, especially with curly hair. People want to do one strand and do these little loop-de-loo things and make really stringy looking hair, looking hair, which is not what we want here. Now notice for the hairs in the background, I've used a lighter gray. I'll even come back through with some brown on those. The hair is not one solid color. Hair, no matter what color the hair, it is never going to be one solid color. I've got a large variety of different shades that I'm using here and I'll show you my color swatches at the end of this clip so you can see what colors I pulled from my collection to make this hair. But it, there are so many different values, different colors in there. So I'm coming back through, I've blocked in all of approximately where my darks are going to go. Now when you draw hair, you want to look at it in terms of abstract shapes. I know you guys hear me say this all the time, but it is especially true with hair. Don't try to draw hair. Draw the shapes that you see in your reference photo. Copy that reference photo, trust it to be accurate, and go from there. So I blocked in my darks. I put a lighter gray over everything, or actually it was more of a medium gray, over everything, and then I blended right over all of that. I'm going to let that dry, and I'm going to do the same thing around the rest of the hair while this is drying. Now the thing with Stonehenge, which is the paper that I'm working on, it is super absorbent, and it just sucks up so much of that odorless mineral spirit. So I end up having to wait a bit between layers and make sure that it dries all the way when I have used it, especially the first layers. The first layers will especially soak up more of it. You don't want to work over wet paper because you can actually damage the tooth of the paper, which will make it so that you can't apply enough additional layers later on. Now what I'm doing in creating this kind of medium tone gray for the background of the hair at this point, well not the background that I'm doing now, but the behind the hair itself for the black hair. What I'm doing is making it so that I'm not fighting the white of the paper so I don't end up with any gritty grainy look of white showing through. I personally cannot stand that look. I don't want my colored pencil work to look like crayon. So uh, that's one of the things that I love so much with the Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner or any odorless mineral spirits. It will help you to avoid that crayon look because it really can, if you've got enough pigment on the paper from your pencils, it can really fill in all of those little holes and gaps in your paper. So I'm just getting this nice solid base on everything. You can see I had to pull in some of the background color from the hair. I didn't come in far enough, which was no big deal. I just used the same colors I used on the background. Right now they look way too dark. I will end up going back over those with white, but for now it's not too important. I've got to let that dry. So here you can see I'm blocking in the shape of the hair again. And I cannot stress this enough. Look at your hair, hair on your reference photo. Work upside down if you need to. Really look at what you've got there and copy that. Don't just draw these individual strands all over. They're chunks and clumps of hair. Big, random, they look like random shapes. They're not actually random. But here you can see again, I've got this nice solid color. I went over that with a bit of brown as well and blended that out. So now we're gonna come back to the main section that we're focusing on the, on the hair here on the left. So here I start to sharpen my pencils a bit more. I wanna make sure that this stays much cleaner than it was. Before when I did my initial layers, it really didn't matter if it was somewhat fuzzy because I was blending that out and that was just kind of blocking everything in. But as I start going, the further into this I get, I'm going to make sure my pencils are sharper and even more sharp and sharper on additional layers. I wanna make sure that all of these lines are clean. And right now it almost looks like weird shapes of metal as I keep building on this, I will turn this into hair. 
It's just a layering process. But because I am working with such a light hand, I'm not pushing very hard with my pencil, this means I'm going to be able to add those extra layers and get all of those wisps, wisps, that is a hard word to say for me for some reason, wisps of hair in there. I suddenly develop a lisp every time I say that word. And again, just follow that reference photo because a lot of these curves, they're not going to make sense. You're going to be doing this and thinking, why would the hair suddenly change direction here? This, why would I do this? But it all comes together at the end. And if this is moving too fast for you, this section on the Patreon video this week is in real time. So you can really see each pencil stroke that I'm doing. Now I'm adding this bluish purple color on top of anywhere where I've added black. I want to make sure that my black is a much richer color, much deeper, deeper than just black. If I just use flat black, it looks flat. So I use the black first, but then I'm going to go over that with that bluish purple color after. And I know everyone always wants to use the exact same colors that I'm using. The colors themselves, not that big of a deal. Go for close. It's your values that matter. Really pay attention to your values, how light your lights are, how dark your darks are. The colors, they play a role. I mean, obviously, they have some to do with it, but it's not what really matters. You could use totally different grays and purples and blacks than what I am, even a different brand. And you can still, as long as your values are what they should be, you'll be fine. Now, I, after I got most of that blocked in, I went ahead and blended that out. While that dries, I'm working on the little wisps in the background. Hey, I got the word right that time. But I'm keeping a very light hand. I do not want to push hard on these curls in the background. The other thing to notice is that all of these curves or curls, none of them are just solid black for the whole strand or solid gray. They vary. They'll start out darker, then they get lighter, then they get darker again. There's a lot of variation in there, and that is part of what makes it look more realistic. If you really look at some of these curls in the background, it's more obvious the way that they fade from dark to light to dark that it that is happening because of how the light is hitting each of those strands of hair now I'm using my white luminance here you can see I'm getting a lot of the little strands in now now it's really starting to come together and starting to look like hair for some of these strands I also used a pale gray from luminance and sometimes the gray violet or violet gray I forget which one it is but I use that one quite a bit too and I like the luminance for that because it's more opaque than the polychromos the polychromos are great for the fine details but when I want to get those highlights in there I'm going to switch over to my luminance you can see I'm coming back through now and really refining these dark bits darkening them up quite a bit. Now this area that I'm working, that it's down by the base of his jaw, kind of by his neck, that is going to be darker on pretty much everyone. No matter what color their hair is, that bit, that area is going to darken up because it ca it's falling in a shadow. So watch that when you're doing your portraits. You don't want the hair to be the same value, the same lightness or darkness all the way through. You've got to get that variation. And on this one even, once I get the rest of his face drawn in, I will probably come back through and darken a little bit of it in that area. It's a little hard to judge the values right now when I'm right up against the white paper, but once I've got the skin in, there's a very good chance I'm going to come back through and darken some of this up still. Now, all of those little random shapes that didn't make sense earlier, look now how they're coming together to create the hair and how much more realistic they look. And seriously, work upside down. If this is hard for you, working upside down, it'll kind of trick your brain into not seeing it as hair. You don't want to look at this and go, okay, I'm drawing hair because chances are it's not going to come out right. When you're looking at this, look at the shapes from your reference photo. I am spending far more time looking at that reference photo than I am my actual artwork. And I'm not worried that every single strand is in the same location. That's not a big deal to me. I just want to go for close. So we're going to speed this up again because it's pretty much just a rinse and repeat thing for the rest of the hair. It's the same thing we just did. And I'm going to come back and do highlights later. But while that section is setting, we'll go ahead and move on really quickly for the rest of this. And it's the same thing. Looking at my reference photo, paying attention to where the lights and the darks go. Watching those abstract shapes. And it's really easy to think, okay, I've got one section. I totally understand how to do hair now. And then rush through everything else and try to do the same type of brush strokes or same pencil strokes on everything. It won't look right. Watch your reference photo because it is going to change direction as you work.
You can see coming back through, adding highlights again with that luminance. And every once in a while, we'll go back over to the area I would previously mostly finished and add more highlights there too. Now, as I get to this stage, I need my pencil to be so sharp when I get to these final areas. Now here, I've got a link. I will link you to the video where I did this previously. I am mixing titanium white and the touch-up texture from brushandpencil.com. I'm mixing these two together and using a liner brush to paint in my highlights. This gives you a similar look to using a gel pen or something like that, only this is archival. This is meant for colored pencil. So it's going to last. And if I have an area that comes out too white, when that dries, when it dries, it's going to lighten up a bit. But if I have an area that is too white, no big deal, I can go on top of it with colored pencil because that's what it's meant for. That's what the touch-up texture is for. Now, again, I'll have links to those in the video description and a link to the video where I show you how exactly I mixed that. But look how great I can get these thin little wispy highlights so, so easily compared to trying to do that with a regular colored pencil. And this method works so well with the techniques that I use otherwise with blending with the mineral spirits. And even if you were to burnish, if you have an area that was just not taking any detail, you push too hard, you damage the paper, this will still go on top of it. This will still stick. You don't want to go too crazy with this because it's one of those things you start doing and you're like, wow, it looks good. It, it'd be pretty easy to go too far with it. So keep stepping away from your artwork to make sure that it needs more highlights so that you don't overdo it. But again, if you did overdo it, you can put colored pencil over it. It's okay. It dries within a few seconds. So you can see all of these little individual wispy hairs that I'm throwing in there now. It's still looking at my reference photo though. I'm not just randomly putting these all over the place. Now that that is setting, I'm going to come back through with my pencil. Very, very sharp pencil and I'm just cleaning up edges, making sure that I don't have kind of a fuzzy look where my pencil may have been a little bit too dull on previous layers. This is where I'm sharpening everything up. I'm coming through with white. I'm also using some of the black and brown and some of the purple color that I used earlier. And I will make a few adjustments on this next week. You'll see that in that video. As I'm working on his face, I may adjust some of the values just here and there. But for the most part, this is done. And because this video is not long enough, let's go ahead and take a look at how I make my color swatches when I'm deciding which pencils to use on any given piece. So I want to show you something that I do every single time I do a portrait, whether it be for the hair or the face. I like to make little color swatches so I have an idea of what pencils or what paint I'm going to want. All I'm going to do is open two projects. I've got one, just a white sheet, and then I've got my reference photo. Come over here to my reference photo, use the eyedropper tool. We can choose that color and then I will bring it over here and make a dot. So I know there's one color I'm going to need. Let's see what some of the lighter colors look like. So we've got that one. Let's bring that over here. That's a really pale purple. That's actually violet gray or gray violet, the one that I keep saying backwards. And we can try this on a few other areas in his hair just to get that idea of some of the colors that I'm going to need. And I can continuously go through here until I have a pretty good understanding of which colors to use. I can do this for his skin. We can go to about the lightest color there. Let's see what that color is. So as you can see, it's n not as light as you might think it is. You may think that's just going to be white and it's not. You can see how much darker that is. Let's go to some of the shaded areas in his face to see how dark that is. I mean, we've got a lot of dark. When we go to the really dark areas, they're really dark. But you can do this to get an idea of what skin tones you are going to need. Here's for his lips. And it's not that any one of these areas is the single color that you're going to use everywhere. It's just some of the colors that you're going to use to create the skin or the hair as in what we saw today. And here were my actual color swatches that I used for this. And I like to just create that project listed and I save the file so that I can pull that up as I'm working if I forget which pencils I was using. This gives me a pretty good idea of what to grab. 
Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs each weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Plus. all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. At the end of last week's video, I recorded my friend and I chasing fireflies way more fun for us to be chasing Jon Snow's. Just saying. Also, side note, I'm so tempted to just want to finish the clothes and leave that face blocked out so we can put our head on it like one of those costume things. Seriously, the temptation is real. Instead, I'll have to settle for photoshopping. How's this? Is it working? Maybe I need to, wait, this angle? Better? Yeah? This hair is prettier than mine. I should just walk around wearing this.